Good evening, welcome to Evening Prayer on Monday the 20th of July. The readings are Psalm 127, just that short psalm, Psalm 127. The Old Testament reading is Ezekiel 10, 1 to 19. And the New Testament reading is 2 Corinthians 6, verse 1, up to chapter 7, verse 1. And all readings will be the NIV. Please feel free to join in with as little or as much of the evening prayer as you wish. So if you've got your words before you, let's begin. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, and when you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Let's just keep a moment of silence uh, before the next prayer in which you're very welcome to join in with me. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Now let's read our psalm, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you hasten to rise up early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the Lord, fruit of the womb, is his gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute with their enemies in the gate. And the glory together. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now let's have the canticle, the song of God's grace. And uh, you can join in with the beginning and the end or with all of it if you wish. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, with every, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children, through Jesus Christ and according to the purpose of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, 
according to the riches of your grace which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose which you set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Now we'll have our readings and our first reading is from Ezekiel. Just let me find Ezekiel chapter 10 verses 1. And uh, in this passage, Ezekiel is um, not the easiest to understand, but um, Ezekiel is having some prophecies and he's continuing with them. And in this one, um, he's focusing on the glory departing from the temple. Then I looked and above the dome that, I was, that was over the heads of the cherubim, there appeared above them something like a sapphire in form resembling a throne. He said to the man clothed in linen, Go within the wheelwork underneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from among the cherubim and scatter them over the city. He went in as I looked on. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the house when the man went in, and a cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord rose up from the cherub to the threshold of the house. The house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the glory of the Lord. The sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard as far as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. When he commanded the man clothed in linen, take fire from within the wheelwork from among the cherubim, he went in and stood beside a wheel, and a cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherubim to the fire that was among the cherubim, took some of it and put it into the hands of the man clothed in linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a human hand under the wings. I looked and there were four wheels beside the cherubim, one beside each cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was like a gleaming beryl. As for their appearance, the four looked alike, something like a wheel within a wheel. And when they moved, they moved in any of the four directions without veering as they moved. But in whatever direction the front wheel faced, the others followed without veering as they moved. Their entire body, their rims, their spokes, their wings and the wheels, the wheels of the four of them, were full of eyes all around. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing the wheel work. Each one had four faces. The first face was that of the cherub. The second face was that of a human being. The third, that of a lion. And the fourth, that of an eagle. The cherubim rose up. These were the living creatures that I saw by the river Chebar. When the cherubim moved, the wheels moved beside them. And when the cherubim lifted up their wings to rise up from the earth, the wheels at their side did not veer. When they stopped, the others stopped. And when they rose up, the others rose up with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord went out from the threshold of the house and stopped above the cherubim. The cherubim lifted up their wings and rose up from the earth in my sight as they went out with the wheels beside them. They stopped at the entrance of the east gate of the house of the Lord, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to our New Testament reading, and this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, Paul is continuing his letter to Corinthians and, as usual, he is being quite blunt and quite firm in what he says. 
So let's read this together. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We were treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Do not be mismatched with unbelievers, for what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship is there between light and darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Beliar? Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from them and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean. Then I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and of spirit, making holiness perfect in the fear of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. So we thank God for his word to us. And now let's go on to the gospel canticle. And remember, please join in with as much or as little as you like. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant, from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. 
my soul proclaims your greatness. Now we'll just have a few prayers at the end of the day. Let's still our hearts before God. Our gracious God and Father, creator of all that is good, we thank you so much for the gift of life, for the wonder of the world in which you have placed us and for all the blessings you so freely lavish upon us as your children. Forgive us that too often we take your gifts for granted and think so little of the giver. Help us to recognise your hand in the ordinary things of life and never to be ungrateful for food and clothing, work and recreation, health and home, family and friends. And so may we live from day to day in the knowledge of your love and goodness, giving thanks always for all things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we just quiet our hearts and uh, pray a prayer for the end of the day. And in our hearts, as we say this prayer, let's remember all those in our hearts today. So our Father, we come to you at the ending of the day with thankful hearts to commit ourselves and those we love to your care and protection for the coming night. Lift from our minds every burden, every anxiety and every fear. And in your great mercy, give us sleep and rest to fit us for the duties of another day through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's been good to worship together and I do hope you all get that good night's rest that we prayed for earlier. Amen and good night.